Not, all right, Frank, I did it. I put out a little newsletter this week from a blog, and this actually has nothing to do with my, pod, or my, my, my blog or my newsletter at all. But what it has to do is with services, Frank. You and I both have apps that have services, and people pay for those services, and they expect a certain level of servicing for subscribing to said services. So let me break this down here. What happened is I went all in on a service called Review, which was a newsletter service, which I really, really liked. I liked their UI, I like how it worked. And I was doing, at one point, almost uh, monthly uh, newsletters to to people out. And then- But, but I don't like how they spell their name, R-E-V-U-E, but fine, moving on. Yeah, like a review. I don't know. I don't know where it came from or like what the story is behind it. But I liked it and it was one of my favorite, you know, things that I had as far as like pieces of software online, writing a newsletter for the price. It made sense for the amount of people I could send it to compared to like MailChimp or other things like that. So a little bit over two years ago, something like that during the pandemic, Twitter purchased review and uh and they made it free. That was pretty cool. I was like, it's free. It's completely free, unlimited. You know, you just go to town, all this stuff. And then uh, they decided to shut it down. And that was it. So what I had to do at that point is like export all my, you know, sub subscribers. I had to re-import them into Ghost, which is another service that I use for my blog. I use Ghost. That was a Kickstarter backer back in the day. But I had to upgrade they, they added like newsletters and subscribers, but I had to upgrade my plan from my legacy plan. I was on the legacy $10 <laughs> a month plan. It was amazing. I had to upgrade it to Ghost Pro official plan, $40 a month. Oof. I remember. For all the subscribers. I, and then I could finally you know, send a newsletter again. I don't want to interrupt, but I just, I just want to say... I called all of this. The moment you told me you were using Ghost, I just saw 10 years into our future and then just you having to move off of Ghost, basically. That's what I foretold. Anyway, continue your story, please. One, I refuse to move off of Ghost ever. <laughs> I mean, at some point, what every person's blog goes through, developer blog, <laughs> is you're like, I'm going to build my own blog engine. Oh, I'm going to use a static site generator. Oh, I'm going to just pay for someone. Oh, I'm gonna pay for someone again. We've 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 settled on static site generators and they're glorious, James, because it's it's way better than running a blog engine. You just generate some HTML. It's fine. Anyway. I know. Please. Anyways, I was Please. thinking of services because this week or this last week, whenever people are watching or viewing, was uh Q3 reporting. And Amazon uh reported, but then they also made an announcement that they are turning off their Halo uh, devices, which are their health tracker devices, and they're ending service in like August or July or something like that, which had me thinking as a oh. software developer, Frank Krueger, what is the right way to wind down <laughs> a product correctly? Like, how do you not make everyone mad when everybody's mad? Every, I think every two years we do this episode, every three years, it, it, it's a ticking clock of how does one sunset? I believe that's the last term we were making fun of. We don't use sunset anymore, but uh, yeah, we're, we're definitely winding down services. And you mentioned the big one, Twitter. I feel like that one's winding down, but we'll see. We'll see if that one has legs and if it keeps going. Uh, you know, the, the whole time you were talking, I, I try not to use too many services, mostly because I'm gun shy. I, I hate this kind of stuff. Um, Dropbox was the last big service I used to integrate into my apps. I used to pull in their SDK into all my apps and access everything because I, I love to provide that capability, but don't do that anymore. And then I would cheat. I would try to find like f free uh, currency, currency data for Kelka. You know, the mm. number one support email I get from Kelka is, hey, your currency data is not up to date. And I'm like, girl, you have currency update code in there. It's supposed to always be up to date. But um, all the free currency prices services have gone away. Those are gone. Mm. Free free does not exist anymore. And then um, what have become, uh, it's, it's kind of neat. There's become these like wholesale API sales people where you can go to 
it's almost like a unified API thing. And you're like, oh, you need currency data, go to this service, pay us through this portal, and you do that kind of stuff, but you get rate limited. And even those things will only survive three to five years or something like that. You know, they, they disappear too. So I think inevitably in the world, like this is just a common problem that's just going to become more and more common throughout time. But we we can attempt to answer your question. What's the right way? The, the, the right way is as less pain for Frank Krueger as possible. That's the right way. I was, you know, funnily enough, talking about services and APIs change because sunsetting an API or a service or something is almost as bad as just changing what that thing returns without telling anybody. I have this demo that I've done for like the last uh, year or so. And it's air quality. I think we've talked about it. And I was doing a conference. I was doing this demo and literally I tried it on a Monday and it worked. And on a Wednesday, they changed the return value of the JSON blob completely, (laughs) the whole structure of it completely. And my entire app broke and all this other stuff. And I, I had to redeploy and do all this. It was wild. It was a wild time to be yeah. alive. But it had me thinking, which is they could just turn it off. My API key could expire. Like, where's the I didn't even get notified. Like, what what's going on here? Well, OK, let's rank that as the worst way to sun. That's not even sunsetting. That's just rude. That's <laughs> like you put that under a slash V2. You don't change the return, Jason. Jeez. Yeah. Hard enough getting these things working. Uh, I did something terrible. Back in the day, it wasn't okay, but you got away with it scraping Google. Uh, everyone did mm. a little bit of it. No one admitted to it, but we all did a little bit of it. <laughs> and Google was vaguely okay with it because we're like, hey, whatever, you're using our search engine. And as long as you pop up the results, that's kind of fine and all that kind of stuff. But they really started cracking down too. So I used to have a lot of cute little fun features in my apps that would use the grand intelligence of the Google search engine to accomplish their tasks. And I've basically had to sunset those features in my own apps because Google does not play that way anymore. You you do not get to, I mean, you can register for their search API, but it's ugly. It's ugly. And you yeah, don't we, do that anymore. We, so really funny you talk about scraping stuff. So on this whole thing about services and sunsetting services <laughs> and paying for service and trusting those services. So uh, I have this, a bunch of automation and I'm always interested in my stats, my uh, stats of what my team is working on. And, you know, you and I, we built out an API, which at some point you'll send me my LCD thing that shows me my follower count on YouTube one day. Right there. Uh, one day. Does it show my follower count on YouTube? I mean, if if you kept that Azure service up, yes. (laughs) Pretty sure. I'll double check it. Now, that one was fascinating because there is a few ways of getting that data, but there is actually like a really nice Google YouTube API. And you can get, they don't, since you're not logged in as me, James, the user, I can't get the granular count, but it will give me whatever is the visible count on the website. So for example, Mm -hmm. it would return, you know, 5,700 instead of 5,732, you know, it kind of chops it off. So, um, on TikTok, I don't know if you heard a bit, a little, 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 little tiny social media app called TikTok. They have an API and then we have a bunch of TikTok accounts and I'm interested in get, I want to get the data, right? I want to get the data Mm -hmm. of just a follower account. Give me the data. They have an API. Now there's many, many problems. I was talking to, to Heather about this. It's like, is it a graph? I, I love it when you're like, oh, they have an API. I can't wait to get my follower count. And then it turns out you have to write a query to get your follower <laughs> count. But okay, please continue. It's a restful API. You can do a slash me and give me the stuff, which is nice, but you can also query. It's only like two APIs. There's like video and profile mm-hmm. or something like that. And that's all you get. It's high level data. So the problem is, is you actually have to create an app, which has to have a reason for existence. And then you have to submit that app to TikTok, get it approved. But then to actually use the API, you have to physically log in via the browser 
to your TikTok account to get an auth token that then has to be renewed every 24 hours, which every 24. <laughs> which is bananas because if it was like every year, I would just log in manually, grab the token. But I'm like, you know, this is way too much work to get a follower account. So you know what I did? Good old HTML agility pack. And here's what I did, Frank. I this is right. did this is how an you HTTP. Do it. So, and then let me tell you how things work one day and they don't the next day. I do an HTTP get, say, give me TikTok.net developers, pull it down. I say, give me the strong div where the thing is called followers, grab the number, parse it out. Boom. I got it. I got it working in like 10 minutes. I was so proud of myself. It was like two lines of C sharp code. I was like, this is beautiful. I got it. So good. So then I go and I look this morning. It doesn't work at all. It throws an exception over and over again. I'm like, what? What is happening? Here's what they did. Overnight, they rolled out an update that first does some loading, please wait thing in the top left corner, like some web assembly thing. Like it mm -hmm. worked yesterday and it doesn't work today. Like they changed it's everything. Like screen screen. Because then it becomes a, a JavaScript thing that they yep. do like an XHR two or something. And then yep. that becomes too sus too. So then it becomes a web assembly thing that does the XHR <laughs> transmits it back or a web worker <laughs> yep. or something like that. It's it's just such an arms race. So I generally do not I, I I've given up. Like I used to scrape everything. I loved I loved writing HTML and Jody Pack stuff. I loved it. But you just can't trust HTML developers. So and oh. any scraper you write lasts a day tops. Yeah. Well, <laughs> Do you I, wrote a, I wrote a new scraper after that. There's another website called talkcount.com. Now, talkcount.com does something interesting that you can query a username. And then in the HTML, it does like a fancy like animation. So I was like, I don't know if this is going to work. But what it's doing is in the HTML that's there, there's a JSON blob under a random div tag with a crazy thing. I pull the JSON out and then I parse the JSON and I get the follower account, which again is going to last about 24 <laughs> hours. So we'll see tomorrow when I get to the office, if it works. And by office, I mean the computer that I'm currently recording this podcast on. I love how our episode on how do you sunset an API is turning and here's how you scrape HTML. Here's some other pro tips, everyone. GitHub, uh, they really rate limit you when you're hitting their API. Even if you're logged in, even if you're fully authenticated, they really rate limit you. You know what they don't rate limit? The HTML. So you know what? Sometimes you just write an HTML scraper for GitHub. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Well, before we get any further and we get off the topic of scrapers, here's an actual product that you can use that'll make your apps absolutely stunning and beautiful because this week's podcast is sponsored by our good friends at Sync Fusion. Listen, Sync Fusion has been sponsoring this podcast for about 8,000 years, and it's because they have absolutely stunning controls and components and one of the most powerful suites of these things for your web, desktop, and mobile applications. Now, I use them in my applications, Island Tracker, my Animal Crossing app, which I did sunset, by the way, um, use it is absolutely beautiful. And I use tons of their charts and their graphs and their little effect animation, their data grids. It's like, mm, just beautiful. They made my app look absolutely stunning. The cool part is they have demo applications that you can download on any operating system. You can get it from absolutely anywhere and it works anywhere. Blazor, Flutter, ASP.NET Core, uh, MVC, J uh, Angular, React, Vue, Dynamaui, Maui, uh, Xamarin apps, UWP, JavaScript apps, WinForms apps, WP apps, Win UI apps, all the apps, every single app. And one of my favorite things is they do tons of file format processing, Excel, PDF, Word, PowerPoint. You can read them, you can create them, you can preview them, you can do all this stuff. And they even have an entire uh, uh, dashboard analytics tool too. So you can do anything with Syncfusion. Go to syncfusion.com forward slash Merge Conflict to learn about all the awesome stuff that Syncfusion has to offer. Syncfusion.com forward slash Merge Conflict. You can find it in the show notes below. And thanks to Syncfusion for the business. Bye. Finally, proof that we we get those uh, ad reads live, everyone. Thank you, Syncfusion. That's absolutely yes. wonderful. They have been with us for eight thousand years. So long, so good. I've used them forever. I've talked about them on the podcast forever. So yes. Um, okay. So we've talked about the issues of actually now at this point, maybe why you shouldn't try to screen scrape, and maybe why you should either create a service and or you know maybe pay someone that has a service out there. But then I get worried that that service is going to go away. Like this, uh, there is a TikTok API. 
uh, website. Like that's mm-hmm. third party that like makes yeah. it really easy. They're like, Hey, we'll give you an auth token. And like, you just request it. I don't know how I feel about that, but it's $30 a month. And that seems real expensive. Wow. So that's actually like a real market niche, uh, a market need there. If they're able to charge $30 a month for API access to what is otherwise free, if you're willing to just log in. So that means like they have good captures too. So you can't even automate the manual login process. (laughs) Yeah. Darn, darn. Wow. That's rough. Um, Hmm. Auth is a whole different thing. So that must just, that's, that sounds more like marketing and business, why they would put such an expiration on there. I, I've never run into one that bad. I remember back in the day when everyone was doing OAuth, I th- thought two weeks was terrible. It is. Two weeks is terrible. Don't, don't expire yeah. tokens in two weeks. But one day, that, that sounds like just a crazy business decision <laughs> yeah, <laughs> to I'm prevent something from happening. Yeah. Well, the API I got burned on last was uh, Dropbox. They did a V1, V2 API switch, which was really rough for for me because they actually changed the whole model of how the whole thing worked. They, Mm. uh, in the V1 model, they would just carve out a directory (laughs) in your app and just kind of sync files to it. People kind of hated this. Every time you got Dropbox, there would be an applications folder. It's called like apps and apps would just, kind of create folders into it and all that kind of stuff. And so they got tired of that and they switched to more of a REST API. So it's funny, like you think of Dropbox as a files API, but they stopped being that. They became this weird REST API where it was like, okay, you post something, you get something, you do that. But anytime you want data, you get from it. It's, It's a very boring FTP view of the world. So it's funny too, like these APIs can attack same exact problem. Here's a bunch of files. I need to access these files, but just present a whole different interface to them. And I get having multiple interfaces. I don't ever get deprecating like a whole different user model for those user interfaces other than the devs just didn't want to support it anymore. Yeah. And, you know, I think with APIs, you know, it's really fascinating now because there are some companies that are like locking down APIs. And then there's other companies that are that are shutting down APIs. You look like we we're talking about with Twitter, but then I know, um, what is it? Uh, Reddit, I think they're going to start charging for their API. There's all these other things. You, even if you rely on an API, you know, I think we are an API economy, right? Like, yeah. I think we really are. Like, we think about the API-ification. I remember Nat Freeman being on saying, like, everything is going to be an app, right? I'm like, everything's <laughs> going to be an API, and all those apps are going to connect to those APIs. You got to rely on those APIs. Now, luckily, neither you or me have created an API that we shut down, but there have been some that we've worked on. But the real question that I have to get back at, there are things that we have shut down or stopped shipping to the store and shop doing, which is kind of the same as shutting down an API. If someone gives you money, Frank, yeah, someone gives you money, how long is that <laughs> money good for? As long as your iPad one keeps running. That's my answer. <laughs> I, uh, you know, I, I've done my best to keep all my apps up and running but yeah i've left a few behind uh the one i regret most l cars reader did you ever do you remember that one mm-hmm. yeah uh this this was my favorite app i ever wrote it was a glorified rss reader uh web browser podcast listener tour anything that had a data feed it would just suck down anything i i it had scrapers upon scrapers talk about scrapers this app <laughs> mother of all scrapers it understood every file format and would pull it down and put it into a fun star trek user interface because why not (laughs) and i i I love that app and um it it was hard to take it off of the store i had to do it for vaguely legal reasons um (laughs) turns out when the store's small you can get away with a star trek app but not for very long uh and i had to remove it and i miss it I know people that miss it. It's it's ancient at this point. No one who's listening to this podcast has probably ever used it other than you, James. But uh, I still think about it. And I, I wish I had that app still because it was omnivorous. Like so many apps are siloing these days. Talk about APIs, right? This yeah. was the open web kind of idea of like, if you have any kind of feed out there, 
I'm just going to eat it up and I'm going to do my best to turn it into a Star Trek UI. <laughs> Did you uh, now you have other apps, though, that have been on the App Store that maybe, you know, do you think they still should be there? Like, you know, what is your not only just dedication to the app that you can update the app, right? Like at some point, you're only one person, Frank, and you do put out new yeah. apps like I think that's the other part to think about, too, is have you when do you stretch yourself too thin where if someone is is paying or is doing a, you know, a su subscription that it's like bad, like, for example, let's say I don't update my cadence or my stream timer for a year or two years. Is that bad? Mm -hmm. I don't think so. I, I Here's our other perennial topic. I get feedback on Twitter. Someone was just asking, is Coca dead? I'm like, oh, no, it's not dead at all. I call it stable. Like, there's not any large features I care to add to it right now. Certainly, there are some large features I could add to it, but it, it does the job I designed it to do. The manual is up to date. Everything's documented. Here's what it does. But people ask if it's dead because it's capitalism. If you're not growing, you're mm -hmm. dying, I guess, right? And it's a little bit frustrating to me because I see it as, no, it's a good tool. It runs on all the platforms very well the way it was designed to, but um, people see that. So I, I have, it's a, it's a whole different tricky question of when do you kill off an app? I kill off an app when... I no longer have a functioning build system for it. Uh, it has no sales. I don't use it myself. Knock it off. There, there's no point in the mental effort. I've made the mistake of a few times of like rejuvenating an app. I think like classical programmer mistake of thinking that like, oh, if I just add a few features, all of a sudden sales will go up on this app that has never sold before. No. Yeah. <laughs> it's either a, a missed market niche or something else. So I, I think it's pretty easy for me to figure out when to drop an app. Also, when CBS sues you, that's a good time to drop an app. Um, I, I think the harder ones are when um, I have apps that I think of as stable. And other people see them as dead. And I'm like, oh, that gets very frustrating for me. It's really fascinating that we talk about this in the terms of apps and APIs. But I think it also comes down to like libraries, like NuGet libraries like that we create. <laughs> you know what I mean? I, I'm yeah. sure how many times have people told you about SQLite-net or like, you know, Monkey Cat <laughs> or some other library I created, you know, it's like, yeah. I don't know. It's, I don't know what else I can add to it. It's like, it's good. Yeah, I mean, joins, <laughs> but if I haven't added joins in 12 years, <laughs> what are the chances I'm ever going to add joins? But um, every so often I think about it, but yeah, it's it's tough. And I, I don't want to like give in to saying like, uh, this is the right decision because it's the easy decision. It, I really feel this way. It's it's stable. It's good. I, I would rather have a stable version. Um, Brian, friend of the show, Brian Ding. Uh, has brought up to me. He's like, "Have you ever thought about doing a SQLite dash net two version two? Mm. And I'm like, "Well, break everything." What? Well, yeah. What does that mean? He's like, "Well, it would let you free yourself up and break the API." I'm like, "Brian, the thing I hate most on this planet is someone breaking an API. Yeah. I think Semver is a plague upon this planet. The moment they said you're allowed to." upon developers at least the moment they said that you're allowed to break the api if you just increase the major version number so i got lost we we lost the path man we 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 went out into the forest then you're not ever allowed to break the api hi you're not ever allowed to if you uh. have to you better increase that version number but you are not allowed to break that API. Anyway, that's my personal feeling. <laughs> I definitely break my, I try to make my API breaks like very minimal. Justified. You have to justify this to the God Zeus. Like this has to be important. <laughs> Cause what, what ends up happening when you break the API, people will update even in a major rev bump. And then they're like, Hey, it says hey. this method doesn't exist anymore. Yeah. Cause it doesn't. <laughs> Yep. Or like it doesn't with the parameters that there's new parameters, yeah. you know, uh, it's hard to design a library and API. I think it's so funny you mentioned that I, so I recently 
have sunset a lot of things. So this, this entire podcast is about sunsetting all the things I recently I've, I've sunset a bunch of apps. Now, some apps, Google sunsets for me <laughs> because <Okay. laughs> uh, the, they, did, uh, they did that to iCircuit for a couple of years. Thanks, Google. <laughs> Google's like, hey, you haven't updated this in a long enough time and it's completely out of date and blah, blah, blah. Right. You haven't sent the, you haven't done things. You, you're just gone. Cleansed. So Apple does it too. Uh, yeah. The only one I have sunset is the Animal Crossing app. Uh, and that was kind of like what you're saying is I kind of felt that my users were really low. I wasn't using it anymore. Animal Crossing had been out for three years. I felt like it was time that it was okay. And I didn't really make any money off it anyway. So that was fine. Um, and it was okay. And I left I left the APIs. If you have the app, all the APIs still work. Like The app still runs. It works. I'll keep those Azure functions up as long as Azure functions running .NET Core 3- <laughs> 2.0 keep working. So... I think Are they're pretty old. Is that a joke? 2.0? No. Uh, I at least had 3.0. The 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 iCircuit site was running .NET 3.0 for a while. It's up to uh, I'm up to six or seven these days. Pretty pretty modern. Let me look. Okay, so I mean, this is all <laughs> it's all public. All right. um, <laughs> so my functions detour. My functions are running t- Net Core App 2.0. 2.1, 2.1. James, James, we need to have an intervention. You need to have a Scott Hanselman talk. We didn't design uh, it. Has it been that long? Three years ago, you used .NET 2? Three years That's ago. A, yeah, I feel like three years ago puts us more around 4, 3. <laughs> yeah, you know, here's the thing is, back in the day, Azure Functions didn't update like at the same time right now it does right. it's like the preview's out it's out it's ready to go so like a lot has changed in those i guess four years since i started this yeah three years it was at the beginning of the pandemic so like yeah three years so wild have they sunset dot net too <laughs> i don't think no, you that can pin it. in security updates <laughs> no you can pin it it works yeah, I, I get that but uh it's not getting updates no 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 ssl no. certs or anything no no but it works <laughs> So I recently yeah. sunset a bunch of libraries. Uh, fun enough, we talk okay. about libraries. Now, a lot of my now, plugins. My- you have a lot of these. James, hi, everyone. If this is the first time you're listening, James used to create a lot of libraries. He ran a library ecosystem for a while there. Doesn't do it anymore. <laughs> He's off that bandwagon, but this man has a lot of libraries. It was kind of my <laughs> shtick um, where I was like, how many... How many things can I abstract in the early Xamarin days? Right, I, had thir- I have 35 packages on NuGet, unique, 70 million downloads. That's not bad. Pretty good. Um, yeah, I had like, it was a whole thing. And all these eventually got merged. Most of them got merged into uh, Xamarin Essentials, which is now part of Don Maui. It's all in there. So three years ago, uh, four years ago, I wrote, uh, an update on every readme. And I said, Hey, I will continue to support maintenance on these as much as I possibly can. But the path forward is for you to migrate to Xamarin essentials. Now, most of these, I can kind of continue to update if necessary, if there was some breaking change, I need to recompile it, reship it. Um, and other ones are kind of like, yeah, this has been good to go. Like, you know, the settings plugin hasn't been updated in six years. Like it's fine. It just keeps on checking, <laughs> you know, like it, you know, yeah. uh, it's good. So eventually though, just a few weeks ago, I said, I'm going to need to archive. I'm going to archive the code. Oh, oh, I guess it's not I, sunsetting anymore. It's archiving. So I archive. So here's the funny part is I archived it and then I forgot to update the readme. So I had to unarchive it, oh, update the readme, and then rearchive. <laughs> That's great. Uh, uh, wait, wait, was that the settings one? Really? Oh, I, I did uh, like 15 That's our, of them. That's how we met. Okay. <laughs> now, here's the question though. I didn't sunset or do anything on NuGet, like, right? Like, I just sunsetted the GitHub no. repo. Sadly, NuGet doesn't have a great way to clear itself out. Like, you just kind of have to look at the date of a package to guess, which I hate because 
you can't tell, is this a stable thing in my parlance or is it truly some rando project from a rando person (laughs) that got uploaded once and hasn't been updated in 10 years? It it is hard to tell the difference between those on NuGet. So NuGet errors on the side of we just keep everything forever (laughs) for eternity. You can delist it. Um, I think... I think delisting only affects searches, right? So you wouldn't break anyone's app if you delisted it? Uh, Correct. You can still always get it. However, Frank, I just discovered in real time as we record this podcast, (laughs) you can deprecate a NuGet package and all of the versions. Mm -hmm. It says deprecating a package. You, well, it, you have to select, it selects the current version but you can say select all versions, which would then inherently be the entire thing. Uh, you can say this is a l- package's legacy and no longer maintained, and it will oh. warn users. That sounds there good. There we go. But I don't think they've gone the Apple slash Google aggressive route of if you haven't updated this thing in four years slash compiled against an old SDK, we'll auto flag you. I don't think no. they've gone that far. But you know it might be time. Like I keep using this thing. The code is stable, right? But I'm happy to bump up the NuGet version (laughs) to a (laughs) point point six. If that makes people happy, I'll take in two PRs that does some doc comment changes, but you know, uh, those kinds of things. Um, Maybe I do feel like NuGet should be auto sunsetting. Auto sunsetting. Yeah, you probably, you know, uh, it's hard to say. But there you can see it. I updated it on my zam.plugins.settings. There's a big package has been deprecated as legacy. Legacy. Now, it's you legacy. should have updated this readme to point to what they should <laughs> be using instead. Yeah, the problem with, oh, I guess I could. Yeah. Oh, it yeah. says the package is missing a readme. I don't know. That seems like everything seems like way too much work. But mm-hmm. uh, again, these are the things that I complain about, Frank, and I should do it. So basically, here's what we've come down to. There's no good way to deprecate, sunset, remove, do anything at all. There's you're never is you're always going to lose. That's what I'm hearing. Change an API, you can't do it. There's no winning solution. Is that correct, Frank? Yeah, I, I would say the best choice would be to use a compiled language that's strongly typed and so <laughs> okay. and use API generation code. So when the API does break, you actually get a compiler error. Other than that, like, yeah, it's the future. You know, that joke about like you can't write a JavaScript app without 300 NPM packages. Packages, API, it's all the same difference, right? So it's, it's, yeah my cardinal rule you're not allowed to break an api ever and if you must rename the package to something else pick a new <laughs> oh my goodness to name it after All you're right. not allowed to break apis <laughs> whatever you say frank so what do we learn today nothing um so besides be that we've learned jobs for the rest of our lives <laughs> yeah uh well i want to thank you frank for discussing the topic uh as people may or may not know if you're just watching this for the first time or listening to this first time Frank and I just record this podcast on the fly. Usually it's about whatever's happening in our life. And since all this TikTok craziness and API craziness has happened in my life, that's what we're talking about. And uh, I thought it was fascinating because of the Amazon stuff, but also I have really been looking at my apps and I got just a few apps in the app store. And I'm like, man, how long do I have to keep the timers counting forever? That's what the CI CD is for. You let, you let the robots keep building those versions. Keep it going. Now, if Apple and everyone else would just stop releasing operating system updates, then I would really never have to update anything. They could just keep emulating iOS 1. <laughs> it was, yeah. No, no, not 1, 2, 2, when we could actually write apps. It would be fine. There you go. Uh, before we get out of here, Frank, I want to do a shout out to our YouTube listeners. Wow. I texted Frank and Frank's like, no one's going to listen. I said, people listen. People wrote comments and I replied to them. Jimmy said, I did assume Frank had slightly, would have a slightly more mad scientist surroundings. I did assume Frank would have more mad scientist surroundings. And I replied, he used to. 
The new place is still getting set up, so just you wait. <laughs> I like I, I like the plants. Thank you, and I have a piano now. I really like my piano. I love my piano. Yeah. Um, but I did live in a Borg cube, I called it. It was all just black metal, wires, computer hardware everywhere. So I'm mm-hmm. enjoying my cottage core change for the moment, but we'll transition cottage core to techno cottage core eventually. Yeah. <laughs> uh someone else wrote in they said it's cool to see frank as he they said for some reason i imagine him looking different listening to just his voice for a few years uh we always see james but not frank it's like cool idea to put on youtube um nice to see you so well frank goes frank and i go through transitions uh and frank and i are in a similar look and feel mode right now i might put more conditioner on my hair but besides that our hair lengths are oddly it's very weird similar oh <laughs> yeah it turns out we're genetically similar too so there might be something there uh westerners yeah, I, I think i'm about to change things up though i'm about to with this i think we'll so funny i've been talking about that as well but i now i can't so you go first oh i go first great yeah 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 uh, i think it's gonna okay. be beard and hair so watch out watch out youtube uh david also wrote in now we're, now we're doing grab bag questions at the end of these podcasts because why not David wrote and he said, hey, I heard you're talking about MD5 and that new MD5 hashing thing. He said, MD5 isn't secure. You got to do AES with 256, blah, blah. Well, I didn't give the background of what we're doing. We're just generating random file names with MD5 that are obfuscated. So they don't really need to be encrypted or decrypted. We're not encrypting or decrypting the contents. They could still create collisions and that collision could corrupt your database if you're relying on the uniqueness of that hash. That's the, that's the problem with it. So, yeah, yeah, they're they're absolutely right. We should. Uh, I measure everything by how many files and bytes per second I can do. I should do some. I, I like to do performance tests on my blog. So I should do some, uh, you know, MD5 versus AES versus SHA do some uh, perf comparisons Mm -hmm. on device and find out because in my head, I always do MD five because I think of it as the fastest one, but who knows? Maybe things are super fast these days. Last one here from Marina. She wrote and said, the main reason for adding the default optional parameters of lambdas are for when passing lambdas as handlers directly in line for minimal APIs and ASP.NET core for the map post map get. Uh, she said, instead of having to create a separate method with those default parameters, uh, she doesn't see any use case for them besides that currently. <laughs> no, there will be. We'll, we'll come there up with be. some just to justify the feature. But that's hilarious. The ASP.NET team, they get all the features they want. All the power. Yeah. The power of the ASP.NET team. It's a lot of developers writing those websites and web apps and web APIs that should never be deprecated. So there you go can't ever change it yeah all right well i think that's gonna do it frank for this week's podcast how do you feel about that i think this is a good stopping point i we could yeah. keep complaining about how the world keeps changing and we have to keep doing our jobs but i think that does get tiresome after a while yeah <laughs> well we'll be back next week with our wwdc predict no i'm just kidding maybe <laughs> apple goggles happening is it- well you'll have to figure out next week what we're going to talk about everyone's talking about these goggles i'm excited for goggles but i'm also not at the same time but you're gonna have to wait no surprises but if you want to check us out go to mergeconflict.fm there's a patreon where you can get bonus podcasts with our faces um on it that's cool um and also you just subscribe so if you're in a podcast you can do that it's also on youtube on james montemagno's youtube that's me um i put it there and the little podcast thing i'll put in the show notes that's gonna do it for this week's podcast so until next week i'm james montemagno And I'm Frank Krueger. Thanks for listening. Peace.